Shiny head, Paul Hickis. Good evening, all. And of course, our Mrs. Brown. Good evening. Myself <coughs> and the legend that is Ian Adkin. He's going to change it now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Ian, on a, another COVID Monday night. We're all in tier three, so there's no fans at football at the moment. And, of course, it's FA Cup draw as well today. Uh, but at the top of the show, we want to send our best wishes to Raul Jimenez, who had that awful injury yesterday um, during the Arsenal game. Uh, get well soon from every every single Birmingham City fan. I'm sure we all sentiment that. We don't want to see any player like that get such a serious... Well, not, not even an injury, let alone a serious, serious... Could be life-changing injury, to be honest with you. Um, so get well soon, Raul Jimenez, from everybody at Blues. Mm, yeah, here, 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 here. Okay, another nil-nil draw, Paul. Uh, off you go. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, struggled to stay awake during that one, I must say. Um, oh, I have been saying, I have been saying it's the fine margins in previous games to last one, um, and we we have created chances. And you know, like Sonic, uh, well, let's start with Luton away last Tuesday. Sonic mm. goes through and puts that away. We win 2-1. Now, obviously, yeah. Everidge, Everidge makes some fantastic saves. And, you know, we, we nick it 2-1. But, um, you know, against Coventry, Djukovic gets some good chances. They go in, we win that game. So, I mean, defensively, it's like night and day, isn't it? Compared to, you know, prior to, you know, pre, uh, sorry, Project Restart team to, you know, since Karanka's come in. It's like night and day defensively. Mm. But I almost think he's still experimenting. Obviously, he does keep changing the team, and I think he is still sort of working out what his best formations, what players, you know, are best where, and it's going to take time. He didn't really get a pre-season. So in my mind, this is almost like a little bit of a, although it's serious games, it is almost like a bit of a pre-season for him to still discover what's what and, and who's playing where. But that one on Saturday was pretty, uh, probably yeah. the worst one so far, wasn't it, really, to watch? Oh, God, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, oh, no. we, the positive is we didn't lose. Um, the negatives are, negative is, sorry, I wish you would take a few more gambles. You know, you got Hogan sat on the bench and McGree, 20 minutes to go, nil-nil. You know, there's nothing going on. Let's take a gamble, take a, you know, take mm. a risk, bring a couple of attacking players on and try and win it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, um, but uh, yeah he seems, yeah. It seems was awful. He's he, uh, close to his chest. Uh, uh, how many of us were channel hopping during the second half? I know I was. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was looking for homes under the hammer. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what was that with Dion Dublin? <laughs> oh yeah, that's. I'll cut it out when it comes to him. <laughs> it was awful. It was. Ian, awful. Did you watch it? Ian? 
No, I didn't. I mean, I've just been obviously do good to watch the games. I've, I've been watching a lot more abroad than anything, especially with Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Because uh, that's what I've been basically doing for the last 12 years. But uh, you see that he's, uh, as I said before, I think he's coming to the club late. He's not quite yeah. sure what his best team is. He's brought some of his own players in as well. And you probably do look at it and think, well, why is he brought him in? We already had we maybe left back with a Pedersen who likes to go forward, attacks a lot, seen a lot of him at Union Berlin. Um, and I'm, I'm still not quite sure what he what he actually wants and what's his best system. I mean, he has always built from the back, I think. And I think there's a lot of Mourinho S in there as well. I think he was his big buddy. Yeah. And yeah. he's the more Mourinho type of coach than probably uh, the Wolves lads, you know what I mean, who, who will defend but will go forward as well. But I still think they've got the players in there to, to get themselves goals. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I honestly do. Yeah, some of our fans, are, you know, I've seen a calling for you know for him to go, and I'm far, I'm far from that. There's no way no. that could I'm potentially be that could potentially be another disaster if he went now. Um, far too early, I, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's in time, in a bit more time. I, I do think though, setting up at home with three centre halves and two defensive midfielders in front of him is is a little bit like you know you probably only need one defensive midfielder and then play a more attack minded midfielder rather than. Sonny Chan, San Jose, one or the other for me. I think yeah, you've got, I, mean, okay, I think in that system, the three, I don't think there's nothing wrong with the three, providing your fullbacks have, have got the license to go and basically play like the wide men. Yeah. As long as you've got the one sitting. And to be fair, I've seen a lot of Sonny when he was at, um, from uh, Dinamo Zagreb and he was on loan at Lokomotiv Zagreb. And then obviously he was captain of the under 21s. And I think he'll come again. Him, I think he's got the, the, the potential to come again. He's strong, but. Possibly if you played the two strikers, I mean, you've got Jukovic who loses that ball on the diagonal, the right to left, which he always gets in that so that position like he did against Comte when he hit the bar. Mm. And Hogan basically has got to go so close to him. And I still think yeah. the two play together. But they've yeah. got to have the service as well. And to be quite honest, if you, you've got a big lad there who wants to head it, so put the ball in the box and, and someone who wants to get the pieces. And the more yeah, ball, yeah, yeah. The yeah. more, ball yeah. The I mean, he's, he, the more just, opportunity for that score. Yeah, he started them together at Luton, and and then he and then he left all the other attacking players on the bench. Um, yeah. So they were kind of like they were just feeding off scraps, really, weren't they? The pair of them. Mm. I, yeah. I think sometimes what happens if you in, in today's modern game is that you can become a clever coach as well, and it's all right what you want, but it's about what players you've got, and you mm. play strength of the players and. To me, you've got a big lad in there who wants a ball in the box. So if you're getting the last third, let's hit him on the diagonal, no problem, because that's the ball he likes. And you've yeah. got Hogan who's a poacher. And he does yeah. get in between the six yard and gets in between the goals, Hogan. There's no thing. He ain't a channel runner. He couldn't do that at the villa. And that's why Brucey bought him to run the channel. But he never did that at Brentford. Or, no. or uh, where he was before. But you you've got goals in you there. So to me, if you've got goals in you, keep putting as many balls in the box as you come. Yeah, we all like the pure football, which is great. But at the end of the day, it's, if you've got an asset and you've got two assets who can score, give them the service. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it is a result, but it's a results business at the end of the day, isn't it? And, you know, we are we are there to win the games. And it doesn't matter how you win. And I've said that all along, you know, all this entertaining football. I mean, in my life going, you know, I, I, we've played good football at times, but we've never got a whole season, really. Have we playing like Real Madrid? Do you know what no, I mean? No, it's, no. no. As we've, as we've always been a team. Mm. I think people can become clever coaches sometimes and probably the reputation they've got where they come from abroad and it's we entertain with this. But you, you play to the strength of the players that you've got. Absolutely. Yeah. Simple as that. And if you do that, then you've got more chance of winning games and give people the service. I said before, yeah. away from home, they're set up away from home by the sounds of it to get results. Yeah. I mean, just exactly, it was, not, not, was a nil-nil. It was well on the cards because, to be fair, Gary sets his teams up quite tight and quite deep mm. and they're competitive and they don't give much away than he never did at Birmingham. So, I mean, a nil-nil, it wasn't a shock for me on Saturday, but no. I think Blues have still got that firepower in them when Karanka decides what his best lineup is and he may have to go to a flat back four in the end. But, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean? I've got the players to do it then either as well. So you've got they're, to they're, they're capable. The thing as well, Ian... There seems to be a lot of people have picked up on the fact he, he hasn't really touched the subs bench. You know, no. is that a bit of a surprise? Because to me, I mean, the extra subs, use them. I mean, you know, I don't get why he's just re relying on one sub in the whole game. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's individual choice with managers, you know what I mean? Everybody has these yeah. 
probably as a, as a set manager, you, you, you've probably got in your mind if, if the game's not going your way, you've always got a plan B. Well, then mm-hmm. you better have a plan C. And sometimes, you, you know, your players, some of them, will probably have a good 60 minutes. Then the last period of the game, they may fade, where suddenly they've got nothing more mentally to offer and brain-wise to offer. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. always know who's going to come on and off. But I mean, that's the individual manager and coach to basically set his stall out and get his plan together, like a plan B, plan C. To, if the thing is going well, OK, you might put another defender on, but if it's not going so well, let's go be a bit more adventurous and put someone else on and, and cause the opposition a bit more of a different problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before I forget, sorry, Mark, before I forget, I just want to mention as well about the tragic passing of um, Papa Boobadia. Yes. Um, so so sad and so tragic at the age of 42 years old yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. He only had a couple yeah. of games, but I do remember his, his goal against Palace in front of Tilton. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's him. Yeah. yeah well, it is out. We have drawn Manchester City in the FA Cup, so um, that's an easy tie. We'll <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> we should get a big crowd for that. <laughs> we surprised bomb. if we don't. What are you going to do, Mark? Go and photograph, photocopy all the cardboard cutouts and put them all out. Might have to. There's I, a marketing ploy there. I've got to say, I do like the cardboard cutout with his the hands in his face like that. that yeah, one. that's quality. That is yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah. That is that's brilliant. Is all out, Fantastic. That is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, dear, so yeah. Uh, yeah, but don't, don't forget, like, like like you were talking about Mourinho a few minutes ago, the first thing he did was shore up that defence. Yeah. And we're doing exactly the same now. When you look at them saves that Everidge has been pulling off, man. Oh, oh, he's oh, what a signing. Well, class. Yeah. yeah. He's playing a season for me. Oh, yeah, 100% mm-hmm. so far. Yeah. Definitely. He's Is probably... It, 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 did you find as well, as we said about Everidge, you talk about it being been very strong defensively. But again, Every just pulled him out the the mire so many times, and as yeah. I say, I, I still don't think he's got his back three settled yet or a back four. No, no, no. I mean, he saved us a load of points already, any average. I'm trying yeah. to think how many points he saved us. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I mean, what sticks in my mind at Preston when we were two one up with a few minutes to go, weren't we? And um, he pulls yeah. up a worldie there, tipping it over the bar. Mm. Yeah, I'm surprised we got him to be honest. I mean. Well, you can play in the Premier League. I mean, it's early days, but you can just tell he's, he's, he's just quality. Mark. Mark. Yeah. Yep. Hey. Don't know the secret to tell me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> there's, there's still some work to do with him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some reactions coming in from the Manchester City. Uh, Aaron Gullers in regards to the Man City game. I think all 10 outfielders should just stand in front of goal and just tell everybody what's happening. And um, from Jason Hughes, I don't know about Man City. Think might need up front. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> what you're finding is that uh, these lot out here, are a, uh, they're a crazy bunch, mate. Honestly, proper crazy. They've won it a few times, haven't they, in recent years? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think we stand a good, really good chance already, do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I do lie as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tottenham sure up the defence and are good on the counter. We don't do enough to stretch defences, says no, Ray we were Hambro. good at the year or so ago, Chris, weren't we? We, mm. we were good on the break and uh, we've, we've kind of gone off that a little bit now. Mm. Yeah. That's oh, a different game. It's a different game. I said before, once he gets his team sorted out, and again, you've, you've got a lot of these, a few Spanish lads over here as well, do you know what I mean? And you've got the, say, so the Croatian that just took. Halevovic is it the other Croatian lad I've seen a lot of him when he was young mm. and like you chop and change at times and sometimes they don't know what which way to turn and you know what I mean what, what we're going to do this week yeah. uh, they, well, I think once he gets it settled and he knows what his best team is providing he knows what his best team is and then stick to it then uh, you can see them starting to get results in the near future yeah but, I mean over the, over the last few games we've had social media with people saying he's useless and he's got a re- you know he's got a good record how can he be useless if he's took Middlesbrough up? He was a point off the playoffs with Forest. He's got something about him, hasn't he? Mm, mm. It even took it even took Sir Alex Ferguson like what four years to win anything, didn't it? At Man United back then. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But you don't yeah. get to, you you just don't get time these days, do you? You don't get the time no. to, to build your uh, empire, do you? you? You know, if if you haven't if you're not doing well after twelve games, the, the fans are calling for your head. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. That's, it. that's in any club that is, not just that, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. just in football in general, isn't it? Oh, yeah, well, that's, that, I think it is. I think, I think it's diff- different from, let's say, years, years ago in the 80s and the 90s, didn't it, where people supported the team. But 
it's like you're coming to a different area now, and people that play championship manager. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like every, every, everybody's a manager, and they know because there's so many things that they can get involved in. Oh yeah, like, they, they love the football club at the end of the day, yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, and then they want the best for it. But everybody wants something immediately now. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not funny unless you've got lots of money to go and spend. It doesn't happen immediately. Mm-hmm. You got no. no and again, if he, the style is a little bit different from last year as well, then you see, to say before, you've got to give it time to settle. And at yeah. the end of the day, he will live and die by his results like any other manager. Um, mm. you, you, you do think that they've got the players. I do think they've probably got, with the say, with the leg coming in now, Halasovic, they've got a similar type. You know what I mean? Crowley and Torrey. And, you know what I mean? Sometimes you look and you think, well, why do we bring another one of that qual- that type again? The yeah. same yeah. Type type of player when we needed this but again he's the manager and he knows his players and he knows what he wants so mm. and then you've got, you got yeah. to give him the opportunity to get it right yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I, I think Look, from, from, where where from Linda Sorry. hang on Paul says, on, Paul uh, Nick. you guys are the best presenting talk and talk show on a Monday night throughout the Covid crisis and lifting people's spirits and we'll all be thinking of you on Friday Linda uh, when you lay your mum to rest we'll be there with mm-hmm. you mate don't worry mm-hmm. well. sure will sure will sure will mm. sure will um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. last, time, last time we met Man City, we were cup holders. How times have changed. Oh, yeah, the League Cup. Yeah, I think Owen Hargreaves scored, didn't they, if I remember? For them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll be yeah. positive we've still got that League Cup in the, in the, in the, in the cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. still the only West Midlands club to win a major trophy in high definition. And in, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this century, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to what yeah. you like. Uh, Paul, we've got uh, quite a few questions, haven't we, to uh, ask Ian. Do you want the, are we going to do the official questions now? or If you want me to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to very quickly Go say, on. I think Karanka's preferred formation is 4 2 3 1, but he hasn't got that number 10 nailed no. down, has he? No, 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 no. You know, no. To Mel had a chance, Crowley's had a chance, yeah. mm. and, and um, McGree's had a chance, and nobody's really made that shirt their own, have they? No. We're well, just on the back, do you, in, uh, Hind says you can see what he's trying to build, uh, but after all Birmingham have suffered over the years, you can understand impatience. But yeah, Karanka is a good manager. We will be watching the game tomorrow. Too mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Too right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, first, on, first question then, Ian. Chris Rice is asking, did Ian grow up supporting the uh, them up the road? Oh. No, that was, was top by the way, Ty. That was the whole game, your first game as well. <laughs> Wait, my parents were born in Aston. They were, they were okay. born by Pace Park. Uh, for, uh, by Pace Park. Yeah. So, obviously, my dad was a Villa fan. So, the first football I watched was basically when you were young, six, seven, my dad took me down to Villa Park. Then the, we moved over to Wrights at, um, in the Radleys, which is, I used to go to Sheldon Heath Comp. So, we were then right on the uh, King George V playing fields. So, then I started to go to Birmingham with all my mates, get the 69 bus 17 as well, which was going from the police station in Sheldon. And I, all my all my football in them was to watch Birmingham um, with my mates as such. But my dad was an Arden Villa fan, so when I was young, my dad used to take me down to Villa, and I used to go down Birmingham with my mates. So basically, you had a foot in both camps, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very diplomatic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Anthony Garvey's is asking. Do you remember your debut at Middlesbrough alongside Kevin Langley, and didn't Andy Kennedy go in goal as Roger Roger Hansbury went off injured? Yeah, that's a, it was. I think I come on the Thursday from Ipswich on loan, um, <laughs> and I scored. To be fair, we drew one-one and scored. And I think yeah, Kevin Langley had signed the same week as myself. Uh, Andrew got injured, and yeah, Andy Kennedy went in, and he I don't really saved the ball. We drew one-one, or we were one. They looked to right near the end, and he said the ball hit him on the head, hit him on the nose, hit him anywhere, but apart from his hands. But he can see we conceded right at the very end. If I remember right. Yeah, we drew yeah. one-one. Yeah. Um, OK, um, and Anthony Garvey again, he said it was at Mansfield when we lost 5-2 um, and uh, obviously frustrations were high and the fans, I think, were giving you a bit of stick, weren't they? And, uh... Oh, it's massive. I mean, I've, I said before, I think sometimes supporters <laughs> don't understand that players have got emotions as well. Mm. And when I joined yeah. Birmingham and obviously Gary Pendry was a manager and Ken Weldon, you saw the promised land and then... But in six months, I mean, Steve Whitney, who's one of the better players, he got sold off. Steve Wigley, he got sold off. Um, and we were heading down into the third division then, wasn't it? From the second to the third yeah. division. Yeah. Um, 
I was really frustrated and I shouldn't have reacted in the manner I did. We got beat 5 2 at Mansfield. It didn't help that Dave McCoy, who was the manager at the time, I think as well, he'd give me a bit of stick. And yet I was probably the only experienced one there who was trying to help everybody else, which was the, we had a youngish team then. And I reacted to something I shouldn't have reacted to. And I did apologize yeah. for the time. And you apologize again. But I, I, I'm emo- when I played, I was emotional. And if things were yeah. going my way or someone upset me, then I'll make sure that I got them back. Or if someone mm-hmm. give me a clap on the nose, I'll make sure they got it back as well. <laughs> yeah. And you're always the type. I was. I never classed myself as what would be a, a terrific footballer, but someone who had a bit of heart. Um, I was captain at every football club because managers wanted you basically to pull everybody together. And Birmingham at that time, we had a young team, and you were trying to pull everybody together. Um, probably didn't play as well as what. I did at Ipswich or Sunderland or previous clubs because of the pressure that we were under as well. I felt a lot of it as a little bit of pressure because you were a local lad as well. And I didn't come back to Birmingham where I had the opportunity to go to other clubs um, to basically end up in the scenario we did when I was playing. We yeah. basically relegated. And, yeah. and it was awful. I felt terrible. And mm. before I reacted. And I said before, we were all emotional someday. I regretted it. But again, it was uh, you, your emotions wrong high. So... Yeah, I apologise then. I'd always apologise now because basically the player shouldn't do it, but I did. Mm-hmm. It's done. Done with. No, I think yeah. over the years, over the years, we've had players throw shirts down, we've had players storming off, you know, and, and it just shows that they care, I think, you know, and, 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 and even, when it, even when I hear the mm. like, people, when people kick off in the dressing room or, you know, you even see it on the field as well. I mean, Bowyer and, 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 and Kieran Dyer, obviously, for years ago and stuff like that. It just, oh. I mean, it's not a great, that's not a great thing, but it shows they care, doesn't it? I think yeah. one, one we've thing. even had fans throw Nick. season tickets on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it goes yeah. both ways. Mm. I don't think both. I mean, you, you, you hit the word on the head there. I don't care what you are. You've got to care. Yeah. And if you care, mm. you've got your, you, you've got emotions about you as well, and you care. But then you see other people around you that maybe you're playing with who don't care, and then you react sometimes in a manner that you, sh- you shouldn't, and you react, you react to the wrong kind of... I mean, I, I, I reacted to the supporters in the end, mm. and you shouldn't do it. It's, it's as simple as that, but it, it, at the time, the, the period of time I was playing at the club, it wasn't a great period. And, mm. I mean, every game was a struggle to get through. I mean, I, mean, I remember one game we played Barnsley at home, and I think we got, we got beat 5-3. I think I might have scored in the game, and... Uh, you, you were, we're playing then in front of 5,000, 6,000 people and we were going down towards the, the station road end again where you, you go into the tunnel, into the dressing rooms and uh, all the supporters congregating then. There was the play, we're going down, there was tea being thrown at us and everything. But again, all the players, the younger ones especially that were coming in, the Clarks and the Frains, everybody gave everything and you can't not that. And sometimes I think the punters, they pay the money, they're entitled to their opinion. But it's not always the players that, that create the mess on the pitch. It's the people up above. And for me at Birmingham at that t- period of time, it was Ken Weldon just wanted to cut, 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 and cut it to the bone. And he did. And as players, we suffered. And yeah. I, before I, I was proud to come back and play for Birmingham. You were a local lad. Um, and believe it or not, I did have the opportunity at the time. We had, I think I'd only been there about two weeks and we played, it was the Lord Mayor's Trophy, if I remember right. And we played Villa at Villa. And it was just a, like a, an afternoon game and yeah. they'd let all the, the kids in uh, from the schools. And I'd only been there about two weeks and I was on loan initially. Um, Graham Taylor was the manager of uh, a villa and Dennis Booth, who was one of his assistants, had pulled me after the game and wanted me to, would you come to Villa? Not sign for Birmingham. I said, no, 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 I'll give my word. I'm staying where I am. And that is a true story, by the way. So you could have ended up going there and playing at the villa, but I didn't. I stayed at Birmingham. And people say, well, you're stupid, you should have. But I said, no, once I've given my word, you're honest. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and, I, and I did. It was, it was just a horrible period to be playing at the football club under the circumstances it was. Mm. I was proud to come back as assistant manager with Terry Cooper and play, and we got promoted. And I felt I gave something back then. Mm. But that, that year is when I played. I mean, I think I probably felt it more than anybody because I was, I was the experienced one. I was a local lad as well. Mm. And I did feel it, by the way. It was a horrible, yeah, yeah, horrible yeah. period. Horrible period. Sorry, it was. And um, <clears throat> Anthony Garvey said the fans were out of order at Mansfield. I said fair play to Ian. At least you showed some bottle. And uh, he's also commented Kevin Langley, Colin Robinson, and Ian scored in the three-five home loss to Barnes. Yeah. Week. yeah. Oh my God. Oh, Aaron got... Gold, with, well, that's, that's your question. Would you say that that's why Troy Deeney won't come and play for us? 
Um, Good question. Eh? Uh, may well be. Mm. I don't. I, I don't know. I. No, he, he should want to play for the club. He's a Birmingham man. He's a Birmingham supporter. As, as he said, he wouldn't play for the club. I don't know. I would have. That would have been. But you know, I think. I think it's probably every. Probably the eighty grand. The eighty yeah. grand a week might not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's. Got, I think that's I mean, got something to do with it. Yeah. I would have thought he would have come. Look at Birmingham lad. He did the, the challenge he would there. He's mm-hmm. always said he wanted to pay for the club. Well, here's your opportunity. Come and play. Mm-hmm. And yeah. They, they say, well, come and do it. It's like saying, well, yeah, I'm a supporter. He said, no, I want to play. Well, here's your opportunity. You're not playing at Watford. If the opportunity arose and they put the money up for him, um, even on loan, come back and play. Try, you know what I mean? Help the club out. Give it, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that might be the key to something and unlocking something that could push the club further up. So mm. we're just that's just we're short of isn't it, a Troy Deeney. Yeah, he'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, we need we yeah, we definitely need another striker, that's we, for sure. We want somebody to knock him yeah. in for fun, really. That's what you You know what yeah. as well, I, I always said before, I mean I probably it was a horrible period when I, when I joined, but then as it moved on a year we started to have a lot of Birmingham people who cared for the club. Mm-hmm. And at the moment, there's that many, and Troy would be one that could probably pull them all together. Mm. But Birmingham at heart, he'd have the supporters behind him as well. And he could be a leader and he could drive them through it. The yeah. second year I was there, at, um, when the kids started to come through, the Clarksons, the Frains, the Piers, the Sturridges, the Tates, suddenly mm-hmm. give a bit of heart back into the club. Yeah, and they all got thrown in the first team under difficult circumstances. And if the team would have been doing well, they play probably would not, maybe not got their opportunity. And then later we signed up here and we signed Gailey as well. Do you know what I mean? And suddenly the heart came back into the club, yeah. and the spirit. And one thing is, all sort of Birmingham is it's it's, a, it's like a Man City, Man United. Man City was always a, the working men's club. It was hard. Do you know what I mean? It was a, you have a go. That that is the the ultimate. And mm-hmm. and sometimes it's. Clubs have managers of, of that trait, but also players as well. And probably, uh, again, someone like Troy coming back with a Birmingham background as well might just go and lift everybody. So there's your challenge. Get Roy, get him back in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Stephen, nice. Gill's, nice Stephen Gill's asking, what is your favourite game in a blue shirt and why? Do you know, I've, I've, I've racked my brains all the way through. At the end of the day, I've, I've got to really say, <laughs> probably my debut, if I'm brutally honest, because it was mm. middle of I'm going back, or, or then we're going to the end of the season. Uh, the last game was Leeds, I think. I just joined on loan. Tatey made his debut when he was 16. Was he 17? And he, it was a Friday night. Friday the night, following, yeah. yeah. The following year was 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 horrible. And I can't, I'm not trying to think of a game where I can say that was an outstanding game. That was a game you really, really enjoyed. I mean, we did play the Villas run the cup, believe it or not. We got we got battered a couple of times, didn't it? Mm. But in the league, I'm thinking. I can't really think back to a real standout game to say I really enjoyed that. The following mm. year, obviously, when we got relegated, it was like the first game crew. I think we won 3 0 at home, something of that nature. Um, I see more standout games when I came back as assistant manager and I played and I coached as well. And I had a couple of games at Leighton Orient and Bradford City. And they give me they give me a bit of pride as much as anything because at least I could put something back on the playing side. I think I only had about five or six games in that mm. promotion year because the majority of my duties were assisting Terry and coaching the first team. So mm. I, I, I really struggled to say that. You know, I mean, I can I can look at the Barnsley game and, and and thing of that nature in Crystal Palace away, and you think, oh my God! But at that period, honestly, it was it was it was wasn't a nice time. To, like, yeah, I mean, it was great to play for the club, but the actual team, we, we, we were a very, very poor team. Mm. And I find yeah. it very difficult. And that's just being honest. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, Paul. Um, do you know how uh, Terry Cooper is, Ian? He was, he's in Tenerife, um, oh. which is, he's had his place there for a long, 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 long while. Um, I'm just trying to think where he was in Tenerife. Mm-hmm. He'd, he had his cancer. I think I'd, I'd seen Mark. I seen Mark, his son, because he, Mark lives in Solihull Hill still. I know how his dad is. Yeah, he still lives in Solihull. Hill. And I asked him how his dad is at the time. He says, fine, he's, he's recovering. So, but he's out in Tenerife. I think Ron goes out there. Ron Atkinson also got, he's got I think he's got a place there. And Ron, yeah. more than anybody. Um, but I think he's, he's okay. Uh, okay. And he's recovered. But yeah, so he's in Tenerife. Very guy. Really nice guy. Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah, yeah. He's fine. Yeah. He's yeah. great. Yeah. I wrote him a letter actually, Ian, after the uh, infamous Stoke game. Don't know whether you remember that one, do you? 
Was that when everybody come on the pitch? I'm not sure. Was yeah. I there then? I wasn't sure. I'm not yeah. sure. I was there then. I don't know. But I, I wrote him a letter and, and, and said, like, you know, don't give up. Don't no. just because of morons, don't give up. And he wrote me such a lovely letter back. I've got it in my museum. And, um, yeah, yeah uh, you know, it was a, a nicely worded uh, letter. I wasn't expecting anything back. Handwritten yeah. back in them days with a stamp on it as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was, to be fair, it was great. Too. I mean, one thing he did is my, I, I, when I left the, the club and I went to Colchester, um, player manager, the, the idea was I was going to go there and they'd said to me, look, we want you to come back, go and get a bit of experience. And when I, when I came back as his assistant, mm. he wasn't quite sure whether Terry was going to be come from Exeter or not. He was like, they were trying to prize him away. And I think for the first three weeks, we'd gone over to Ireland um, and I'd set up all the pre-season for him when I came back. But he wasn't sure whether Terry was going to be the manager. And if not, then I was going to take over, which I was mm. fine with because... Again, I was still learning the trade as much as anything. But he, he let me have my head and he let me get on with it. But he had, he had a wonderful experience about him to know when I, you, were, you were doing a bit of coaching, might be defending, whatever it was, when he could see the players that thought, well, they've had enough. And then he used to step in and go, thanks, Ian. And I'm like, oh, there's steam coming out my ears, you know what I mean? But he, <laughs> he, that's a sign of a good manager. He, he, Definitely. He, he stood, he, listened, he looked, he listened. And then stepped in when he thought was right. And he was a good manager, Terry Cooper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Last of the no. official questions, Nick, sorry. Um, Jason Hughes oh, is asking, what, what are your memories of the double pitch invasions during the last game of the season in 1990 against Reading? Uh, mm. think, think Blues fans were trying to get the game stopped as we were losing and going to miss out on the playoffs. Mad game and atmosphere. <sighs> Do you know, my other <laughs> riding thought, we, ate, we, we came off the pitch. I can still see visually now. We, the pitch invasion came on, didn't it? And we, we, we had to go off the pitch. And in fancy dress, weren't they? The punters were, the supporters were all fancy dress. And I always remember a pink panther taking a swing at someone. <laughs> 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 so someone might be listening to this. There might have been a Crystal Palace. <laughs> Crystal Palace, yeah. And by the way, it was a pink panther and someone had a swipe at someone, like a Batman or something like, you know what I mean? And the next thing I'd be a Batman lying on the ground. <laughs> and we all got to go off the pitch and then we all come back on. So we came back on, but... Um, I mean, that was the overriding. I think I'd been out injured and I wanted to come back and play in that one. And I'd, I'd missed about the last four games, I think, and came back and, and actually played in that game because you wanted to play. You know what I mean? It was the last yeah. game. We were getting relegated anyway, but you wanted to play. And, and yeah. I did. Cool. We, uh, I think we were about three down in 10 minutes. <laughs> my, money, my money would have been on Batman there. Ian is a good talk. <laughs> <laughs> the pink panther, the pink panther come from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick, uh, Nick. Great show coming from Joe Donahoe. Great show, lads. Ian's a great talker. Knows the score for real with the Weldons, etc. On the low crowd. Thanks so, uh, so much, lads, for the time and work you put into the show. So grateful, Joe. Endorse it. Keep right on. Thank you very much, Joe. That's a nice comment. Nice comment. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Nice comment, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Brand. Good show. Yes, sir. That, uh, that Reading game was my ex wife's first ever game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's, sig- <laughs> what's the significance? Significant <laughs> difference. <laughs> Horses came up. And she was, does this happen every week? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were sat in the main stand, right? Um, this was like, not the main stand, so the railway, in the railway. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we walked through. What's the one up to Villanelle? And as we walked in, there was oh, a that's right. drift over her. Yeah. And uh, she says, oh, you got a water lick? I says, no, that's from the toilets. Went at half time to get a pie and they served it on a piece of ripped off brown yeah. cloth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, was, was that the rhythm game? Rock, the horses, the, the police came on with the horses as well. Let the horses, yeah. the horses go on the pitch. We can't remember going back. We come back on the pitch, didn't we, afterwards? And there was yeah. fucking horses had like shit everywhere all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, good with the days. So, so, Nick, you just wanted your ex wife to be as miserable as we are. Is that what it was? <laughs> Roundabout way, yeah. yeah. It worked. That's why she's now your ex wife. <laughs> I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure if you're going to mention if we were going to mention it, but obviously the death of Maradona as well. And I remember the oh, time when he was linked. With, remember the time when he was linked with Blues. Yeah, 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was just a rumour, surely. No problem, Ter- uh, Trevor. Anytime, anytime, mate. You, if you've got any questions yourself, Trevor, you just write them on that board, my friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we, had it, we had it for about three summers, didn't we? I think Sullivan was trying to sell season tickets. I mean, we were it with John Pierre Papin, Maradona, yeah. and Kenneth Anderson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We went for Ricky Otto in the end, didn't we? <laughs> I think we did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's quality, isn't it? That's quality. <laughs> no, Kenneth that's Anderson, nice. he just got like he was one of the top goal scorers in the '94 World Cup, and he's going to come to Blues. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you ever, Ian, Ian, sorry, Ian, did, did you ever uh, cross paths with Maradona? Did you ever meet him in your coaching or anything? No, not all of it. I've had. Um, I mean, in the last 12, 13 years, I, I wanted to do something different with the coaching, so. I've, I'd like for Sunderland, then Everton, um, and the Villa asked me back to do the European as well, and then Wolves. I've had like 12, 13 years abroad. So basically, going into South America and all around Europe, like looking at players, but I've never never come across Warren uh-huh. Donner on, on, the, on, the, on the journey, like you know what I mean? So, but it was um, some fun. I was going to say, oh, do you yeah. think he's the best of all time, do you think? Or would you still say that man to look, go to Pele? Oh, to be fair, I was lucky enough to see Pelly play, believe it or not. It was going, um, went too much to the World Cup. Again, it was going back to my dad and his roots of, of the villa. And it, I think it was Santos. Uh, it was the minor strike. I remember many, many years ago. Would that be 70s or late 60s? With the late minor, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, and Santos played at Villa Park in the hmm. minor strike. And there was three floodlights on. It, it was a generator. And my dad had took me down and Pelly was playing for Santos. So, that was my only real shot of, of, of Pelly, to be fair, playing for Santos. I think Sullivan tried to sign him afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to sign everybody there as well. He never come yeah. off. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny, they, all, they all tried it. Never I think happened. Daddy needed a few more players. He didn't have enough. <laughs> yeah. do, you remember, do, you remember when we were linked, do you remember when we were linked with Vinnie Jones as well and he said he couldn't trap a bus? And he said it's probably because he parked in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda's written in. She said, uh, "But her and Jeremy are both watching. Come on, Blues! <laughs> One nil." And then she's asking Ian, "What do you do for work now?" I did the last twelve years, thirteen years. I've been uh, traveling around Europe and South America, just doing recruitment, oh, um, head of recruitment and stuff, and that. So initially, it was I got the coaching <laughs> that I really enjoyed and the managerial side, but I got fed up of being like that. What I call in the lower leagues. Like your one-trick pony, where you, you I said before, you've got your players, yeah. you get them up, you set them out the store, you get the best out of them. But if you try to be clever with them, you're going to get relegated, or you do some of the daft. And I, I'd done that too much. I want to do something different, so I got the opportunity at Sunderland, to be fair, to set up a whole European network for them about 13 years ago when they just got promoted to the Premier League when Roy Keane was manager. So I set it all up. Then I, I moved to Everton, and I've been at Wolves the last 18 months, and then about. Two months ago, um, again, Europe, you're not going to, you can't get out there, you can't get to any games. Um, and I just decided, well, rather than just sit and watch a video or f- three or four videos a day, which they'd like you to do, that I'd, I'd do something different at the moment. I've just been, my, my son's got a, a company called P Performance, and it's just all uh, samba and it's flexibility, movements. And I've been helping him through the summer, to be fair, and we've, we've done very well. I've had a lot of Birmingham. Lads, to be fair, have come out of the academy, the, the Callum, the Sullivans and the Rico Browns and uh, Fogarty's lad. Um, and we've had, we've had half a dozen of them and I put our sessions on, on flexibility and mobility. Uh, things that people don't do now, and it's, it's all born out of a lad called Roger Spry, who lives in Tamworth, but has worked with Mourinho, Ronaldo, Messi, and he lives in Tamworth. But there's only Ron Atkinson who's ever given the opportunity here when he was manager of Villa and Sheffield Wednesday. So it's it's just all about movement and using your body and how to use your body. So I've been basically helping my son over the last three or four months do that. So as I said before, in terms of the games, you can't get 20 games at the moment anyway. Mm-hmm. Sally Clay's asking, uh, how does Ian rate Birmingham City fans in relation to other team support? How much difference does the support make to players given the current circumstances? I, it, it's vital, honestly, especially when things aren't quite going so well. And again, I, I, it, it's an emotional game and players get emotional as well. Now, I'm not sure they can take the stick like we used to years ago. And you used to take the stick and you used to use it as banter. 
Do you know what I mean? And, and people could take a bit of to and fro in, but it's not so much now. And I, I think it's a it's a world where now the, the, the players need the support. And it's going to be ironic, I think, when the lockdown finishes and the punters go back into the, the, the grounds and, and suddenly players have got to perform again in front of spectators. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, they're getting a bit of an easy ride and they've got to use their own motivation to, to get themselves going. So it's going to be interesting, like when, they, when the, the players come back. As, as a club, I always, I, I, again, I've, someone who has said to me, now you're going to play for Sunderland, Everton, Birmingham, Ipswich, uh, you'd be delighted. Mm. And all them first three clubs, Sunderland, Everton, Birmingham, I, I always found that they, they were the similar kind of supporters where they, were, they, they liked the hard work, they liked the graft, they liked people to have a go, but they also liked to play. But the fundamental was you give everything and you had the shirt on and you went for it, you know what I mean? Mm. And then I was delighted. I'm, I'm very lucky to have played for them three clubs because they're all the similar kind of Elk with supporters, where probably you know what I mean. Sunderland with Newcastle, Everton with Liverpool, Birmingham with Villa. So uh, you're proud to have played for all for all those clubs of that nature. But the supporters are so vital, I think now, especially because of this the modern world where people don't have as much banter now as what we used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Ian, who was the best player you played with at Blues and in your whole career? I think what would ask me this, you know, out of everybody, I mean, I was really lucky enough. And I was at Sunderland, I played with people on the coast who, who, who yeah. come in. And I was Everton with, we, 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 I was looking to be in the championship side. You know, I mean, when they won the title in 85. So you had your, your, your Sharps, your Stevens, your Ratcliffs and all this kind. Mm-hmm. Ipswich, I was lucky with, with Terry Butcher. Um, again, they were selling everybody off at the time because of the Pioneer stand. They had to go and fund that. Bobby Robson just left. So all the big players had gone apart from, Terry, McCall, Paul Cooper. But of everybody I've ever played with, you know, and I only played with him for six months, Frank Worthington was a genius. Oh, can I can imagine. Oh. Oh, sorry, Frank Worthington. And he, I, people say about Frank Flamboyant, I mean, on the little stories, I mean, when he came to Sunderland, we were bottom of the league and then suddenly we'd, we'd finished about half up the league, I think, in his first year. And he was great. I mean, I was fortunate then to be captain of Sunderland as well. And, the whistle go, the referee blow the whistle and we're ready to go out and everybody's like this, come on lads, we're going to have a go. And there was Frank in front of the mirror and he'd get his hair and he'd, 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 he'd short, he hadn't got his shorts on and he'd go over and we'd have to be waiting for him. I'm like, we were dying to get out. I'm like, short <laughs> son and everything. And he, he was a genius, man. Definitely. Again, he used to come to Sunderland and I used to go on the pitch with him at Roca um, in after, two afternoons a week with him. And people didn't think they just thought he was flamboyant and didn't work hard. That the bloke was a genius, an absolute yeah. genius. And I have everybody, he keeps coming back to me because of his ability and his skill. And also, I got on really well with him and he looked after me as well. So, yeah, yeah. Frank was as good as anybody for me. And what yeah. about at Blues? What, what would you say at Blues was the best player you played with? I think potentially Tatey. Yeah. was one who, because it was a difficult period. I mean, the year that we got relegated as such, I mean, everybody had gone and the young kids had the head. It was it wasn't a good period. It wasn't a good team. And we weren't blessed with a lot of terrific individuals. It was as simple as that. But then Tatey, I think that I joined in deadline day on loan or just before. And then Tatey made his debut against Leeds the last game of the season on a Friday night. And Tatey was a talent. And yeah. then I was, un- I was unlucky enough to play in the same game when he did his cruciate. And I think yeah. I was like four into away. And it was one of those games, one of the six games I played. Um, and so I'll tell the story. When I came back as the assistant manager in Tatey and, and uh, Bill Colwell, who since passed away as well, he was like there with Terry and he was into mention bringing me back. Um, Palladini then, Gianni, was always hanging about when he, you know what I mean, the agent and he was uh, rather yeah. an agent and that. And whether it was Palladino or not, but there, there were talk that AC Milan wanted him. Oh, nice. wow. oh yeah, it's a true story. And yeah. it was all in the back. And I always remember Palladino saying to him, go on, we've got a deal lined up. What do you want? Mm-hmm. And, oh, well, I think it was Colville or Terry went, well, we we'll check 750. And, and, and uh, Palladino gave it, no, no, you've got, to, you've got to go a million first because if you go under a million, they'll think he's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and I just came to the and I, I see my land name. We're batting on the door. Then he had his injury, and unfortunately, had wow. his injury. But oh, probably never recovered from that, by the way. But yeah. he, he could have been some talent. 
Yeah. Tatey, like, you know what I mean? He, yeah, he, he was unlucky yeah. with injury, wasn't he? He, was, he missed out on Wembley, didn't he, 91? He was unlucky a little bit with injury, but also yeah. then I think with the recovery as well, at the time it was a long recovery and frustration got all the tight in the end and he didn't probably get where he should have. Mm. Um, and I said, Kushits at that time went, right now everybody can go and have, go to sports science and they can go through and have this operation and that, come back very quickly. But then it was a bad injury that finished a lot of players. It doesn't happen there. Mm. Some interesting comments coming in. John Smith just wanted to say to Ian, supported the Blues during those hard times in the 80s. Ian's driving force in difficult times. You always gave 100%. Uh, Linda wants to tell me that I've got to get the first round in when we finally get back to bar eight. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's the most important thing. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sally, bring the uh, fig rolls with you when we when we get back. Oh, they're disgusting. Bre- Brenda's asking, can uh, can you ask Ian who was the best manager you played under and who was your best friend at Blues? Um, manager, but we got we really got to look. Al- Alan Durban was very good for me. Um, I was a young kid at Shrewsbury when Alan took over from Mor- Morris Evans, who's since passed away as well. And it was Alan that took me to Sunderland. But really, Howard Kendall, I mean, I can't. I mean, that Bobby Ferguson, who came to Birmingham as assistant manager with Dave McCoy, he had a hell of a brain. He was way ahead of his time. But you can't, I can't really go above Howard Kendall because of what he achieved. And I, Howard was just so laid back is what he did. You know what I mean? He always knew his best team. Um, and I joined Everton from Sunderland, but I'd been out three months and I'd only been training one day. But it was going to be difficult to, to dislodge Rackley from Mountfield anyway at the time. So I was looking to get the game that did him. But I've seen how it would work and he was he was terrific, but so laid back. Oh, incredible. But he was harsh at times as well. If you had to give it you, he'd give it you. But he, he always knew his best team, picked his best team regardless. If I'd come in and had three good games, made no difference. Rackley mm-hmm. back in or Mountfield coming. So for me, I can't go any further than that. From Birmingham, really, I've, I feel I've always kept in touch with Clarkey. Uh, and to be fair, when I was manager in Northampton, like, you, you came back for your Birmingham influence when I came. Obviously, Clarkey came, Franey came, Dean Pia, Gailey, uh, who I took in as well. And, and so, um, and Gleghorn as well, to be fair, was always a good friend of mine because of when I was at Ipswich, Nigel signed from CM Red Star or Blue Star uh, and came to Ipswich. So, probably those as much as, as, much as anyway. Those are people I keep in touch with. Mm. He was my first, he was my first favourite player, Gleghorn. Oh, yeah. He was, yeah. <laughs> was very underrated. He came in, mm-hmm. Bobby Ferguson brought him in from CM Red Star. Um, and we were in the first division then as well. Uh, and he came in and he's got terrific talent. <clears throat> I mean, again, in, in, in my team, I mean, Rogerson and Gleghorn, you, you couldn't wish for two better wide men. No, uh, no. They yeah. to each other. And I think they got how many goals? So they, they, they were instrumental right in the promotion. Yeah. With yeah. The goals that they they got it round the back post as well. Nigel was terrific in the air. I mean, he had a big head. Probably called him Bruce Blockhead. Um, <laughs> if you saw the size of his head, like it was bigger than the body, and he weren't hard to hit. <laughs> Rogerson's quality round the back post. So, um, yeah, I, I do feel you've kept in touch with people. I wouldn't say anybody's like a direct individual saying, "Oh, he's my best mate," but kept in touch with everybody. So, well, as many people as you can, like you know what I mean in, mm-hmm. in the football. Yeah. And a lot of people that, as again, that I had to look through the team sheet. So, blimey, I forgot about him. <gasps> forgot about him as well. Where are they now? And yeah, it's just one of those things in football is that sometimes we don't always keep in touch with our t- uh, teammates that we should. So, I keep in touch with a lot of people from Sunderland and Everton still, and I do with Birmingham. So, like a variety in the mixture. Yeah. Have you got any, what, what, sorry, I was going to say, uh, sorry, and have you got any mementos from your days at Blues? Any souvenirs or anything like that? Any shirts or anything? Uh, yeah. I got to be fair, I probably got more because I played in the over 35s, didn't I? I used to, oh, <laughs> to play right. in the NEC, so we used to play in them games as well. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I have. I've got shirts of, of things of that nature. The, the one thing, probably the my biggest disappointment, and I got the real hump over to be fair, was when we uh, we got promoted and I felt as though you, you, you were part of something and give it back. And then we went to Wigan and got beat on the Tuesday, I think. And then we got beat by Stockport on the Saturday. Mm. And I wouldn't speak for a week because the player, I'd got the hunt with everybody, the players. I got the hunt with Terry as well, to be fair, because we got promoted, but you want to go and win the title. Yeah. Yeah. What you did was empty. You want to win that medal, don't you? Of course, yeah. Who who remembers the champions? 
Mm. Uh, what year was that? That would be... 91, 92, wasn't it? Yeah, 91, 91, 92. When 91, we got 92 yeah. Was that a night game up at Wigan when it was absolutely hacking it down? Yeah, I think it we was. Were, we got, we got three yeah, we we went were doing the Congre, <laughs> sliding down in all the mud. Uh, I think I was at that game as well, yeah. <laughs> So I know it's good to be done that too. Fair. That would have been probably the most memorable thing you would have had from your Birmingham days. You had yeah. the most. But you, when, when you get that far, I, I, you want you to win the medal. It's simple. Yeah. Well, I've, got a badge, I've got a badge in my museum, Ian, which says Birmingham City Division Three Champions yeah. in that year. Yeah, right. Yeah. We yeah. Never, I've got an official yeah. badge which, which has got that we've got to the. <laughs> We won the won the league and we never did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that was only just Clinton beforehand. Do you know what I mean? Mm. We got mm. um we got a live question coming in from Mick Greaves, uh, Ian. He's asking who was your tough, who was the toughest player you ever played against. Well, you think of them days. There was like now you, the the, uh, the big people like your Mick Arthur. It's just not about no There's more. No tough guys now. No. No, one, no, no one wants to play like that. In, in that period when I play, I mean, every week you had someone like Gary Bertles, who was a big lad, he wanted to do it. Big Mick was as, was as again, was as, as a hard opponent as anybody because when that ball came in the box, I said, people put the ball in the box. You had got a head it, but when you headed it, you always knew you got a belt as well off Mick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in terms of physicality, Mick was a better player as well that people give him credit for. They give him this... Mm. Yeah, we were like, it was tough and it was hard. But he could play as well, by the way. And I remember playing against Mick when he made his debut for Lincoln um, against Shrewsbury. And he came on a substitute. And Lincoln had another massive striker who used to play for West Brom called Percy Freeman. And he went off. He got like sunken eyes. And you think, well, he's gone off. Oh, that's good. Then Mick came on. Deary me. And suddenly, <laughs> like, I mean, it was like elbows everywhere. But always oh, give me a clattery Mick. I remember playing in the... Uh, this, I think it was the third round of the FA Cup at Sunderland and he's given me a right strike older line ended up I had to go off and but yeah that was par and parcel of the game do you know what I mean it's mm. he it was tough <laughs> quick strikers at the time the, the two probably were Tony Cotty and Paul Walsh yeah, yeah. They, they, they could twist and turn um, they were different type to Mick but Mick was hard to play Gary Thompson was the same similar kind you know what I mean you, they were big like, you had to handle them and also, yeah 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 you had to be clever enough when you knew you could win the ball. And I was only 5'11". You know I mean, they're six foot. And a lot of the time, it was just, I had to shout, I'm up. <laughs> I was a drop off. <laughs> and that was to me. Yeah. So you had to, you had to be clever all the time with these people. But there was two different types. There was there's, yeah. the Nick Harford type, but the two sharper ones, and so were Paul Walsh and Tony Cotty. They were yeah. like the ones now that people use. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Peter Beasley as well was good, wasn't he? Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, they all, I mean, to fair, you've got to look at Man United. I mean, there was when uh, Whiteside as well, do you know what I mean? We're yeah, yeah. Not boxing out, still. You think well, Whiteside has been injured. Oh, that's good. Then suddenly Mark Hughes, I think, made his own debut. It was his debut. First thing he did was stamp on my toe. You think, gee, yeah, I mean, like, I was like a bull in a china shop. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. But every week you face someone that was a difficult opponent. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All kind of different way it was someone was strong in the air you knew you were going to get a clatter I mean I've got about 30 stitches in the head but you just got on with it yeah. you got in yeah. half time there went one of these stitched you up and you went back out yeah you know that's me? right yeah. blood coming yeah. down your face yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, went, you didn't like it so like there was different types I mean Alan Brazil when in his in his heyday before he was injured he was a good player as well he was sharp and he was quick and Ipswich had a hell of a side yeah, know, yeah 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 you know, yeah. Do you know what I mean so mm-hmm. there was there was two different types every week that you played against. It was that big man, little man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. How yeah. the game has what changed. Was the, what was the banter like amongst the lad, lads at Blues and when you was there? Obviously, any good pranks or anything you can tell us about in the dressing room or any, um, funny, any funny stories? It became like it was a youngish kind of dressing room at the time, you know what I mean? So everybody was were pushed up. But in, in terms of the, the, the actual dressing room itself, it, it was really quite... Quiet, do you know what I mean? We, yeah, it was honestly, it was a strange period. I mean, one of the funniest stories ever. I remember they like, were signed Carl Richards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bournemouth. Oh, my god, yeah. this disaster. You ever. Were the best. <laughs> oh, god, well, we, we played at Bournemouth and he ran Vince over some ragged and we signed him on the strength of that. So we'd actually brought him in and he came in, he came in. Ken Weldon had promised him, a, must have promised him a car. 
So anyway, I remember him going into the office and then he's coming out of the office, she's like, and he's got in the car and then suddenly he's come back in the office, he's ranting and raving, Mark, I'm on the car, we're going, we're going what's the matter? He passed his test in an automatic, he's a manual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he took the car off him and never give him another one. And it was that one or nothing. And he couldn't drive a manual car. It was just, honestly, he was some of, I mean, there was just some story as well, the one going back to the Barnsley game. And again, some people were looking at it now and think, finally, we, we got beat 5 for him. We're all sitting in the bath. And, and John John Truick at the time, he hadn't had a, he'd had a rough ride off the supporters as well. And, mm. and at the time, the dressing room then was the back of the uh, station. So that your punters could get onto the, over the, the back of the, um, uh, not the, the opposite end from the tilt, the, the railway end, and yeah. come around the back and we're all mm. in the bath. And someone's hurled the brick, is true one, hurled the brick straight through the window with John Truick's name on, and we're sitting in the bath, and we've all got one of these, but he's got one And we came out, but he got this thing with, with John Truick on. But it, 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 it wasn't like a massively banterous gesture, because it was so young. And I, I'm not being funny, when you're losing every week as well, which we were in that one period, it's hard to get any banter going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, honestly, it was it was such a difficult period. And as I said before, and people say about heroes like now and the, the club going to back when when Bruce was there getting promoted. I think sometimes people forget of the players who've had the rough end of the <laughs> stick and how they've kept the club going. And it's not so much me, but the people like the John Frains, your Clarksons, your Pearsons, your Tatys. You know I mean, they were like the lifeblood at the time, and mm-hmm. basically they, they they got the club going again, and because yeah. of that, they were youthful. And mm. they had a heart, and they had a heart. For, they gave the heart beat back to the football club. Definitely. The kids, yeah. the time when I was there. And I'll always say that, you know what I mean? And there was a, a couple of others underneath. The, the Red Robinson underneath came up as well. So yeah. they became the heartbeat. And, and they yeah. were great, by the way. You know what I mean, as we go on, you get a bit more banter as well. But mm. it, honestly, it was such a difficult period. that Everybody used to come in a little bit well deflated, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, was, mm-hmm. like, it was really strange. Yeah. 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 I think all that, although it sounds like a hor- you know a horrible period, it sounds like you know there was you were having some great times as well. I would did. I mean, obviously, it was yeah. it, you'd have you'd have some fun about it as well. Do you know what I mean? But mm. it was it was really difficult when the kids were coming through because the main thing is like you know what I mean they they were more focused and probably when Dave McKay came in. To be fair, he had his he'd, he'd been in uh, Egypt, I think it was Egypt. Uh, and over there, he got affected by the sun, the pigment of his skin, and Bobby Ferguson just come in. It was, I think, it was his first, must have been his first day of training. So anyway, he, he'd come in, and we were at uh, Damson Lane in the, the training ground, and people wouldn't believe that, but that Damson Lane was the best training ground in the Midlands, by the way, way before Buddy Maurice or yeah. anything like a state of the art place. Mm. It was fantastic. So anyway, we're training down on the one pitch. Is pre- pre- from the old, the younger generation won't know what Dams and Park uh, Lane is, but yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, out of the out of the dressing room comes this bloke, and he's wrapped up. He's got like a towel round his head, sunglasses, the visor on, and like you're thinking, I think it's something from Mars. And it was Dave <laughs> McCoy. We had to, it was sunny. He had to wear all this stuff on him because of the pigment of his skin. And the lads, by the way, started to call him crackers. It was just, it was like 90 degrees and he'd come out and I dressed him. All you could see was like basically his eyes and sunglasses. But no, I remember that. He was, he was, was, he, was he actually the manager of Egypt, was he? I, I'm not sure, to be fair, but he had Bobby Ferguson. I've got a feeling he was, you know, But when he was sunny, he, had to, he dressed himself up. You couldn't see his face. <laughs> well, I must say, this first hour has absolutely flown by. Oh, it's crazy. Right, we've got a quiz coming up. Chris, do you uh, introduce us to that, please? Oh, yeah. So, um, so what's happening now is we've got a bit of a who going on. So you'll hear the who, right? Okay. And then you'll hear a voice after, uh, probably about 25 seconds. We want you to tell us who it is. So quite from the um, presenters, please. Like. Well, he's going to change it now. I think he'll... The, the leadership on, on the team, all these question marks that are the, they're the foundation of a successful team. And, and Arsenal have, have been lacking in, 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 that, in that measure and, and the results and the style and the way that they're losing matches would, would indicate that. Well, let's just talk about his, his selection process for captaincy because it's interesting, isn't it, to, 
to almost put that out to the dressing room. It... So there you go. Ooh, that's Sweet. a difficult one. Ah. Oh, oh, yeah. Of course, yeah, Nick doesn't know, does he? Have you got it, Paul? No, I don't. Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I, 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 yeah, it's my idea, so yeah. Oh, right, right. <laughs> 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 Can't beat inside knowledge. <laughs> Pete, Pete Taylor said Jamie Redknapp. That's not. That's not correct. I'll give the only. Obviously, this person has got blues links. Mm. Mm. I thought this would be really easy. So yeah, I thought that people would get this oh, straight yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's got, yeah, he's got. He's got. Um, is it Sue Lawley from Jason Hughes? <laughs> Sue Lawley. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, also, I've got um, a little picture that's going to flash up on the screen. You, 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 you four won't be able to see this, but uh, I just want people to have a look at this uh, picture. Remember it, because I'm going to ask questions about it later. There you go. I'll put it on again. So, so that, yeah, yeah, there we go. So there's a picture coming Alan up. Alan you from Trevor Smith. Has he got blues links? Yeah. <laughs> no. Has he? No. Yeah. We nearly signed him as a manager once. Well, <laughs> I'm still laughing at Sue Lawley. Yeah. Oh, that's a great picture, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put that together earlier. Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Oh, my life. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, yeah so, so, the, so, so he's got blues link. Should we give him one more listen? Okay, Chris? then I'll play it now. I'll give him, should we give him 10 seconds this time instead of 25? What do you reckon? Oh, go on, Neil. Here we go. The character, the backbone... The, the leadership on, on the team, all these question marks that are the, they're the foundation of a successful uh, someone's team. Someone's got it anyway. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, well done. Well done, Paul. Well done, Paul. Well done, Paul. Well done, Paul. Well style and the way that they're losing matches would... Oh, oh right, right. Let's just right, talk okay. about his, his selection well done, process. Well McCarthy. I was going to suggest Darren Purse, actually, because it sounds a bit like him as well. Yeah. Does a little bit, yeah. 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 So that, was, that, 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 that went on longer than I expected, anyway. Mm, yeah, we've got a really hard one for next week, haven't we, yeah? Paul. Okay, can you yeah. flash your picture again, Chris, for a, for about twenty seconds? Uh, okay, then there we go. So there's a lot uh, of information on that picture. So yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a couple uh, of questions yeah. that I'm going to put uh, on the on the group later. So uh, uh, a little competition and uh, throwing a few goodies for people. There we go. So did, did you, uh, Ian? Did you know that? Did you know that was Matthew Upson? I was, I was going to say. I, I was going to say. Believe it or not, I didn't know what they put in or not. The Upson gave it away to me. I thought Upson because of the Arsenal connection. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that, yeah. that was the voice. Ooh, that's Upson. Mm. He's yeah. talking about Arsenal as well, Birmingham Arsenal. So, I, yeah. It, it, yeah, I did. I, in my mind, I, that's Matthew Upson. Mm. Yeah. Some player, wasn't it? Oh, Good great. Player. Player. Yeah. What a player. Him and Kenny. Yeah. That was a great combo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great combo, yeah. 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 Good stuff. Okay, so... Assigned football or programs. Yes. And uh, how many tickets have we sold for it at the moment, Mrs. Brown? Uh, I'm not sure. I think uh, Craig will uh, let us know okay. later. But he has we sent me a text. Let it says, go. We're not going to let the assigned football go until we have fulfilled two cards up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't got the footballs to hand at the moment, but there is pictures of them on the Tilt and Talk page. Now, it's two quid a go. Yep. Or five pounds for three goes. And uh, as soon as the cards are filled, I'm sure Chris will do one of his two-minute um, live ski scenes where he pulls a name out of a hat. All right? so <laughs> yeah, with a microphone are, this time. We are insistent. We are insistent that we fill those cards up and make some good money uh, for the Birmingham at BHST, for uh, mm -hmm. uh, PTSD, for uh, the Paul Devlin's charity and Jeff Horsfield's charity. Birmingham 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 do you say Birmingham Children's Hospital? Children's Hospital as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to... Okay, so this talk show is sponsored by Boyle Sports, principal sponsor of Birmingham City Football Club, also in conjunction with SAS Autos and the Garrison Coffee Company and our good friends at Boise <laughs> Labour Club. Now, we're also going out tomorrow night on Switch Radio. Don't forget that. So it's uh, Switch Radio. This, this show goes out... Um, recorded. Uh, Chris will do his edits overnight and we'll go out on Switch, uh, yeah, Switch they Radio. Just get the, they just get the best bits. <laughs> We've got a lovely, a lovely guest. We have a lovely guest next week, Chris. We have. It's our good friend, all the way from Miami. Yes. Is that our uh, actor friend? Actor friend. Yeah. Actor. Yeah. We all wear ties next week, don't we? 
<laughs> yeah, that would be a good one. It would not be nice to catch up with them and see uh, see what they've been doing over in America recently. Yeah, it's a lovely man, lovely yeah. man. Okay. Nick, okay. Nick, can I quickly just say that the um, the can we if you go onto our group page, you'll see the uh, the donate link for that um, for the the balls thing. Yeah, perfect. The lucky. lucky then, uh, do you want anybody to send you a um, uh, a photograph of that payment once it's been made? I think I think uh, Craig's sorting that out. So. Craig sort of that. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, I'm just the monkey all, this week. All good. Uh, what else have we got for this week, Mrs. Brown? Anything? Uh, no, we're going to uh, we're going to do we're going to have the winner for that one next week. Yeah. And then hopefully, uh, either the week after, we're going to do the draw for the um, well, not the draw, but the auction for the shirt, the shirt, Liam Daish's shirt. That's going to be live. Is it? Yeah. That's going to be live, yeah. And I'll sh- you, yeah. you can see it. You'll be able to see it in a bit, hopefully. There we go. Oh, there you go. It's, it's around there somewhere. And, uh, mega thanks to Richard Whitehouse for supplying these two balls. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we wanted to do this a long time ago, but obviously we haven't been able to. But they've been in my very safe possession since. And, uh, you know, they're still here <laughs> waiting there to be worn. So, please, oh, half time. Come nil, bore and wood too. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so please, please, please have a go and see if you can win yourself a you know a signed a signed blues ball prior to Christmas. Mm. Mm. So Ian, Ian, who was your football idol growing up, mate? Um, probably Bobby Moore around there. You know what I mean? He was that he was that era when sixty six. You were nine then, so the sixty six World Cup team really. Um, and Bobby Moore was always that icon, wasn't he, that was, was pushed forward and he was elegant and he was a good footballer as well. Um, yeah. Probably Bobby Moore as, as much as anyway. Everybody will remember Jeff Hurst for the 66 World Cup final, which is great, you know what I mean, because if people do. But if anybody, Bobby Moore, and he was just, well, even when he went from West Ham to Fulham, do you know what I mean? You, 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 he was just the icon for me at that time. He was the captain of England. They won the World Cup. You can't beat that. Can't beat it. No. I do remember that, and I was only six and a half. But I do, I do remember the day well. Five and a yeah. half, six and a half, like that. Yeah, just, just started. All... Just started drinking then, hadn't you, Nick? Little faggot. All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were the days, eh? Oh, they were the days. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm, with my next question. I'm gonna test your memory now, Ian. So, what would you say playing for Blues when you was on the pitch? What would you say was the best goal we scored, or you was playing your most memorable goal that we scored? I know it was a tough time, so you're gonna to have to think hard. But <laughs> can't be many. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't it. Any first, yeah. God, oh, so I can't. How many goals did you score, Ian? Was it six, seven? Not necessarily you. Not necessarily no, a goal that you scored, but the best goal. That the team scored like while you were playing. Mm. Do you know? I, 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 again, I'm finding that very, very, very <laughs> hard to remember. Yeah, in point a goal. We're going back then thirty. Yeah, it's a long, it's a long way. Okay, have a think about it. In the meantime, Paul, can you do the one to eleven, please, dude? Yeah, let's do the one to eleven. Be looking forward to this. Yeah, got to, so, so we've got your. So, yeah, we've asked Ian, obviously, like we do with all our special guests, to pick his 1-11 to 11 from the players he played with for us. Um, so, yeah, we're going to ask Ian to do that as well now, at the same time as thinking about that goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think none of them scored. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've reached that milestone where we forget everything, Ian. Don't worry about it. Oh, well, that's four years on now, isn't it? 30 years on, it is 30 odd years on. 35. Yeah, got to be. Yeah. 30 years ago was 1990, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four away then, Ian. Well, the team? Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Defending goal, well, I mean, it was a difficult period anyway at the time because all the, every keeper let them in anyway. Um, <laughs> Martin Thomas or, or Roger Hansbury were the two and if I had to pick one, it would be Martin Thomas. Right. Yeah, he was good, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah I liked it. again, it wasn't easy for Tomo because I think in that team, the experienced players were Tomo, myself, and Harry Roberts. That was his, basically. Yeah. Um, and, and Tomo was was uh, was the best at, the, at that time. To be fair to him, mm-hmm. yeah. And that. Um, right back to be fair, I said before I've, I've gone for players basically who had a heart and wanted to. I mean, we're Birmingham lads, and 
Ian Clarkson, to me, I mean, it's been, Kevin Ashley played a few games as well before he had his big move to Wolves. Um, but Kevin was a good player, but to me, didn't have the heart of Ian Clarkson. Clark, he had a, had a big heart. Uh, yes. And he was the winner. Um, and he could play a little bit as well, Ian. And he had that nasty streak, always called him Muttley. So uh, he always had a like to moan. So they clerk it right back. Left back, I'd take Frame. Uh, again, yes. he was another one of the youngsters who were coming through. Birmingham lad had a big heart about him as well. And also had a great left foot, by yes. the way. Yeah, yeah. Just, and they were both, Wembley, uh, yeah, well, he did. And to, yeah, to be fair, obviously, I took him to Northampton as well. Frame, like, you know what I mean? When Barry Fry probably didn't treat him particularly well. And I was lucky enough to get him out. And he, he, got, he got the winner in the 90, about the 93rd minute at Wembley against Swansea in the playoffs. So yeah. I, I played Frame. Both fullbacks basically supported the fullback, uh, the wide man, rather than be a really adventurous. Although, if any of them, Frame was a more adventurous. Centre half really it was a difficult one as well because when we got relegated it was people like Vince Overson and and that and Vince was okay he could head the ball and everything we were very stiff but I'd go back to when I came back the second uh, as assistant manager and play with Paul Marden who we took from Bristol City mm. I mean Marden had a lot of pace he went down to Liverpool as well for a week um, and by all accounts did quite well Terry had, had a good relationship with Graham Souness let him go down there for a week and. Uh, I, I don't know why that deal never came off because Graham was making good noises about him. But Paul had pace. The only thing Paul had was he was because he had pace, like a lot of players. He's he was a bit like all lackadaisical and waited for people. <laughs> he waited to get for the ball. He wanted someone to have a run with, and suddenly m- mistakes occurred in his game. But I take Paul because of his pace. Yeah. The yeah. left side, um, mm-hmm. Trevor Matheson, uh, again yeah. out of everybody. Some the the, the punters might not think of it, but. Trevor had a bit of pace as well. One thing they were both blessed with was pace. And Trevor was naturally left-sided, uh, had a good left foot. Lovely lad as well, but he's a great kid. Had a big yeah. heart in Trevor as well. So that would be my back four uh, yeah. that we actually played with. Great. I mean, going to the midfield, um, Rogerson out on the right yeah. uh, and Gleghorn on the left, for, for, as again, before I thought as two wide men, they were terrific and, and they could both yeah. score out the back post. The goals were ultimately responsible for against promotion. Ian had terrific silky skills and Nigel had skill, but he was also a powerful lad around the back post. So as two wide men, I, I, I'd go Rogerson and Gleghorn. The midfield, uh, again, was a, a bit of a difficult one. I mean, Tatey uh, was 16, I think, when he played against Leeds and I played in the game before he got his injury. Uh, he, was a, he was a terrific footballer, modern-day footballer, Tatey now, because he had energy and he could play. Um, so I'd have Tatey in the midfield with Dean Pierre, who probably wasn't the best footballer in the world, but complimented everybody else within the team. And again, I took him to Northampton. And if anybody got took out of position, Dean had terrific energy to go and cover. And he just fed the ball. He, he won it and he fed it. Um, and he would feed it to people like Tatey, who had terrific ability. So mm. midfield there, big leg on the left, Rogerson on the right. Pierre Holding, Tate could go and go where he wanted because he was a terrific footballer. Um, the two strikers are such a good... I mean, going back, a lot of supporters, unless they're from our era, might not remember Steve Whitten. Um, mm-hmm. Steve, yeah, do you. Terrific, terrific ability, by the way. And he had a terrific shot on him. Um, mm-hmm. Again, probably came to the club when he, we, we weren't doing as well as what everybody wanted. He got very disillusioned. And I think he went from Birmingham, maybe to Ipswich. Um, I think he played at West Ham in the top flight as he did with Coventry. I think he went Sheffield Wednesday, Ian. Sheffield Wednesday, yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. From Birmingham yeah. Sheffield Wednesday with Ron. Big Ron took him to Sheffield yeah. Wednesday. He had terrific ability. He had a great shot on him and he could hold the ball in as well. Um, lost his way a little bit towards the end of his career. Liked to tot. Um, uh, <laughs> and went off the ropes <laughs> that way. Play with him, and I played with him, believe it or not, was Pescalido. And there's other people like Simon Sturridge as well, who had a big heart for Birmingham, who was a good player. But yeah. I just saw Pesh, um, I, I think I put down, I, I played with Pesh. He'd come over from Canada, uh, a lad called Tony Taylor, who was uh, Terry Cooper's friend, had recommended him and, and sent him over from Canada. And I played in the reserve game. His very first game for Birmingham was against Bristol Rovers in the reserve game. Mm-hmm. And I actually played in this with him. Um, and then we signed him straight after the game and he played. So I, I, I may have only played one game, but I played. Um, and I'd put Pescadillo, he worked very hard, P- 
tempested as well, and he had the eye for a goal, but it was his work rate as well. And yeah. to me, Steve Whitney would have been a perfect Steve Whitten, Pescolido, and Tate. That they've got some ability about them as well, and they and they score goals, all three of them. So yeah. that would be my my pairing up there. I mean, later on, I'm, again, I'm not quite sure where I played with John Gale um, and Louis Donner, who got pace as well, and uh, say Gale had a massive heart, and Hoppy had a big heart as well for Birmingham. So. Um, the, the team that I left, which was assistant manager when I was coaching everything, that had a lot more burn, but I called Birmingham Heart about it. And it wasn't a bad team, by the way. But one thing he did, as I said before, he give everything for the club. And were, all of them were Birmingham lads. And he, he, he give the heart back to the club, by the way. And I don't think people probably recognised that at the time. And, and that was all due to, the say, the frames, your Clarksons, your Pearsons, your Sturridges and your Tatis. They give the club heart. Mm. Stuff, stuff, and who would be captain here? Um, out of that lot, I'd, I'd probably Clarkson. I think yeah. Clark, Clarkson, Clark, yeah. Clarkson was a leader, he, you know yeah. what I mean? And Clark, Clark, he was one of the types again that he would get annoyed and he would get annoyed with people as well if they, mm. if they weren't pulling the weight. He would tell them, and that's why I called him Muttley, you know what I mean? He was nicknamed <laughs> Muttley. Um, yeah. And he had a heart, and I tell you what, if someone wasn't doing the job and yeah. he was upset, he'd put someone in Rose Ed and all, by the way. And a big, oh, yeah. a big blues yeah. fan as well. Mass, still yeah, massive blues fan. Yeah. Yeah. They had a heart for Birmingham. Mm. I mean, all of them, Tatey did, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and he did, but, and then your two fullbacks, and then Gailey came back as well. And at least we, we got a heartbeat and Hoppy, and we got a heartbeat back into the club. Yeah, yeah. Um, just as we left, and, and that ultimately then got the rise up and I think then Barry took over and took us down again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then brought six, 60 odd players back with him. Yeah. Yeah, boy, 60 odd players, yeah, Ricky. I think Ricky had his debut, by the way. It was that against Cambridge and he scored two. Was it an own, was it, yeah, 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 yeah. When he scored, then he got an own goal as well. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah. Ricky looked back at Ricky up. Yeah. So, um, no, so that's basically the team you picked there was what I think is as good at that period of time. But the big thing was it might have lacked a little bit of ability. We had a heart, and that, yeah. got, the, that, that mm. heart got the club going again. I don't care what people say. No, no, you're mm. right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. Okay, it's, uh, we're actually into the last 15 minutes of the show. Oh, dear. That means oh, wow. Here we go. Uh, what we do is a bit of word association between football and, uh, and anything else that I can think of. And well, during the course of this show, I thought of a fruit and vegetable shop. <laughs> fruit and vegetable shop and football. Shop. You go. You got fifteen minutes. Okay. You must. You must have one in mind, Nick, to start us off with. Uh, I, did, uh, <laughs> I did. I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Useless. Got yourself a presenter. Yeah, I'm struggling. <laughs> uh, potato on love. Whoa! There we go. Potato on love. That's top of my head. Uh, apparently, you're a doppelganger for Sean, Sean Connery. I'm talking to you, Ian, not, uh, not nope. Paul. Sean Connery <laughs> and Selwyn Froggy. Yeah, probably Selwyn Froggy more. <laughs> well, like, first of all, I've had a growth of this nature, by the way. I thought it, it uh, supported prostate, prostate cancer as well for the month of the watch. It. So, oh, good. And also, I thought like, I might shave it off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Robin Cabbage coming from Pete Taylor. Uh, Aubergine <laughs> Martins, which is the best one. <laughs> Aubergine Martins, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Cabbage is quite good, though. That's quite good. Yeah. 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 What, about Adam, what about Adam Banana instead of Lalana? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah We've got Steve Marrow coming, Mickey Mellon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about what about Spud Brocken? Yeah, good yeah. one. Spud yeah. Brocken, yeah. yeah, good one. Very not, well, not your works. best, not your best, Mark. But... <laughs> Oh, oh, Ian, Ian, still no idea on this goal, mate. Steve <laughs> Whitten must have scored good. <laughs> well, well, I've got a book here. I'll keep going through the book. <laughs> Go through <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Get on with the media, quick. He's Googling who he played for now. Yeah. The thing is, he keeps on not Birmingham more. <laughs> 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 I can remember my goal. I'm not just trying to think. I'm trying to think of a Rogers and Gleghorn one. To be fair, they would have been as good. I mean, that's because they were the, the predominant ones in the second period when I came back at the club. To be fair, but that was always round the back post. So, yeah. I've got gonna... a con- controversial one just come in from myself. Oh. Here we go, David Celery. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 
the most hated man in Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Uh, we've got Nikolai. Oh, 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 one goal. I can remember the one goal. By the way, Peter, Peter, maybe Peterborough. I didn't score it, but I came on. We were losing one nil, and I came on with about ten minutes to go, and it was a vital goal. To be fair, Mark Cooper scored it. We drew one one with Peterborough. Yeah. And I rose round the back post and back headed one back, and Coops put it in from about a yard. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that was my sister. I'm, I'm really trying. I'm struggling. What's What's Mark doing now? Is he still in football or Mark? Mark Cooper. Cooper. Is it? Uh, he's the manager at Forest Green. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've had yeah. Odin Bailey, isn't he? Odin yeah. Bailey playing for Odin Bailey, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. The, the Blues connection. Yeah. 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 Going he's, back. He's going, going back to what? So, sorry. Um. Go sorry, Chris. Going back to what you said, Ian, about Paul Martin going on trial to Liverpool. Yeah. I read at the time that Mark Cooper went as well. Was that true? Do you know, I can't remember. It, it may well have done. I mean, it, it bear in mind, say, uh, people were surprised at the time, thinking, oh, Marden going to Liverpool. But Terry was very close to Graham Souness because of the, Mis uh, the Middlesbrough connection. They both played there. And I, I think remember it, reading it. Yeah, the bit of the friendship one as well. But apparently Paul mm. had done quite well there. And I don't yeah. really I don't know what happened. I'm not sure Mark went, but he may have done I, I genuinely can't remember with that one. But as I said before, Mard's, Mard's had the potential. Mm -hmm. He always had this little what I call wick, and it was basically over, to me I always overconfidence. He was so quick, yeah. but he, he, you know, I mean, he relied. He wanted to he wanted to race with people rather than mm -hmm. actually do something and get in a position first or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And that was probably his downfall. I think from did he then to West Brom? I think it was yeah, he probably did. Great kid, by the way. He still is in Solihull. Yeah, yeah. He got yeah. He, he was capped by Wales as well, wasn't he? Uh, mid nineties. Oh, I didn't realise it was your fair. And came on against Germany, I think it was. Oh, yeah. I didn't know he was. Lovely kid. Watching. Lovely, great kid. Smashing mm -hmm. kid. Come from Bristol, obviously. <laughs> but he, he, he That's did a well. good one. That's a good one from Pete Taylor. Pear Murta Saka. Darren, Steve Cabbage, uh, Andy Much <laughs> Rooms. Aubergine Bell. Charlie Bellery. What about Craig Gardner? Yeah, well done. Hey. Oh, wow. hey. So what we got yeah. predictions for uh, tomorrow night then? Barnsley at home? 1-1. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I think it'll be another draw. I think it'll be another draw, I really do. Do you? Nah, two nil to Blues, mate, tomorrow. Um, I, wonder, I, think, think, yeah. I want to say 2-0, but I, I can see us... I can see... I can't see a scoring. I can see it's probably losing one, one goal. Oh, it's going to be one nil. Uh, it could be a one nil. I mean, they're, they're getting they're, they're due a home win. You mm. know what I mean? They're on the line, and you go and sneak a home win tomorrow. Might be hopefully it'll be the one that they could just go and sneak a win. Maybe get battered, but they get they, they sneak a win. Yeah. Sometimes. yeah. And yeah. they're probably due, they're probably due a result like that as well. By the way. Yeah, I know. We keep yeah. saying do we're know, due. Do we, do, do we know if the Croatian kids in line to? Um, be featured oh, at yeah, all. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard anything. No, no, I think his last no, game, he last time he played was with Heron Beam back, back in March, when he so if he, so that's been his last game, probably in terms of fitness and speed. He's probably not up to it. Maybe no, no. he, he, he could be the number 10, to be fair. Which, if you like, that's his, his, yeah. his basically preferred 4 2 3 1. Yeah. He will be that number 10. Mm. He's yeah. a hit in that position. Um, would you say he's better than what we, obviously you know about him would yeah. you say he's better than what we've got there or what we've had technically, technically yes by a million mile um, right and you'd have to get up to speed and again the only thing is he's, he's still very lightweight he's never really filled out from or potentially and body strength wise either which whatever people say you've still got to get to speed of the championship and the pace of it and the combativeness of it you know and nature of it as such so Mm. Uh, but, but the lad can play. That lad's a player. It's, it's up to them now to get the best out of him and find the formation to get the best out of him because he can create as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Good. That's promising. What, what do you think? What's think? Paul Ibrahimovic, he's a big Swede. Stephen Pears. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wouldn't tell him that. I'm flattened. <laughs> you wouldn't what, sorry? I wouldn't tell him that. No, I no neither would I. <laughs> Lime, Lionel Messi, Andrea Pear. Um, Ian Atkins diet. 
<laughs> what are they eating pies and drinking beer at the moment? <laughs> oh, I like that one. Wood Brocken, uh, Wayne Pruney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, blimey. Uh, right, okay. Uh, Pete Taylor thinks we'll get more yellow cards and goals tomorrow. And um, Nicholas Wales, but he wants just to have a quick word on this take on, uh, on the Almagia um, post today. Ah, uh, he... yeah. Okay, I'll just throw my two pen thing. I'm a, I'm a bit I'm a bit fed up of what they call now doom scrollers who just it seem to scroll down Facebook and other social media sites looking for bad things that have happened to the Blues or are going to happen. Oh come on! We're Birmingham City. Come on! It's never been any different. <laughs> <laughs> what will be will be. Mm. Good PR there. There you go. What's your take on it, Nick? I'm just fed up of all the negativity, to be honest with you. Look, if a guy's got to go to court, he'll go to court, and and that's that. That's, you know, what's it to do with you or me or anybody else? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But then... Right, we've got uh, Charlton Coconut, uh, (laughs) on John Terry Vegetable Soup. (laughs) Ken Leake. Ken Ken Leake. (laughs) (laughs) Rory Grape. Paul Dates from Craig, that's a good one. Yeah, good one. Paul Dates, yeah. <laughs> Paul Dates, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, with five minutes to the show to go, don't forget, please, please, please join us in winning this sign football. We'd love to give it away, certainly before Christmas, and get it to you. And uh, all you've got to do is go onto the Tilt and Talk page. Everything is on there that you need to uh, put your PayPal money in or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two signed footballs. Come on, yeah. we want to get rid of the other one before Christmas as well. We'd love to. Yeah. Got Sol Campbell Nick, suit. Nick, can I quickly just say uh, well done to John Farrington who won the um, won the shirt Absolutely. last week uh, yeah. of the full squad shirt, and uh, yeah. that's Good bumped point. our uh, money up a bit. That's fantastic. Thank yeah. you. Lynn's just typed in avalanche of goals tomorrow. Chris Brown be worried. Be very worried. I'm looking forward oh. to it. Not worried. I'll tell you what, though, if you do do one in the buff, it'll make it easy for you to use your bucket, won't it? <laughs> How, do you... <laughs> How do you know I haven't been using it all the way through this? <laughs> <laughs> but the BBC don't use them tactics. <laughs> I've got a weak bladder. Oral... I can't help it. Well, conversations. <laughs> Okay, so sum up your time at Blues then in a, in about two minutes, if you could, uh, Ian. <laughs> um, Easy. Joining the club, obviously you sold the promised land and it just never happened. And Ken obviously just cut everything to the bone. So initially when you just joined as a player, very frustrating because, again, I, you know what I mean? You didn't expect what was going to happen, the way that the club was being run, run to the ground. Um, one of real frustration, but then one of pride of being able to come back as assistant manager, coach uh, and play the games that I did um, and help the club back in, in game promotion. It was obviously back into the, first, the second division then. But you can take pride in that, you know what I mean? And uh, that was the spell that I'd remember more because I said before, there's more happy occasions. We won more games and we had a, uh, a promotion at the end of it, but the the first period was just she won a frustration. Frustration only for the supporters, but for the club as well, because you were brought up in the area and it, it, that was its lowest point ever. Um, and and the, 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 the supporters didn't realise what we had to put up with. You know what I mean? I mean, before we we, we trained and came came well, then we we had six balls. Wouldn't give us any balls for training. Wouldn't pay for anything. We actually trained at the back of the railway, the station end, on that bit of waste ground there. That was our training pitch. The the actual um, uh, playground on the sign going into the old main stand, we should do our set pieces there. He wouldn't pay mm. for anything again. We didn't have a training ground. So it was frustrating. It was horrible. But then the second period, it was by the way, it was great to play for the club, but a horrible period to play in the team as such. But then the second period was a lot better because we gained promotion. And I always felt that I gave something back then being a local lad as well. So mm. uh, something that didn't turn out well initially ended up well. And Absolutely. Up. You're right. Yeah. Did, you play, did you play in the uh, in the game where we played, I think it was Chester at Chesterfield? No, I don't think I did. It was Chester- about that era. 
So all I remember, we, we, we turned up, me and my mate, we were literally first out, directed into a field, this big country burly popper says, oh, she's only, there's about 400 of you coming to the house. I've just passed 6,000 on the motorway. You, know, you better get some <laughs> so, And the Birmingham <laughs> Climbing over the top of the roof and dropping down to get into the stadium. Never seen anything like it. It's absolutely mad. <laughs> yeah, the, to be fair, the, 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 the promotion year, I mean, the, the away support was fantastic wherever we go. But at least you gave a bit of pride back into the club. And suddenly... I had a company car after that Wigan game. Well, at that Wigan game, it was a white Mondeo, right? And I had to, I was, we'd been sliding down that grass bank and we were just <laughs> covered <You're> in <laughs> from head to toe. It was like anything like that. Yeah. And then we all start yeah. Kong around the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's Birmingham fans for you. That's what we do. Yeah. We've got great sense of humour. Yeah. Great sense of humour. Have you been much recently, Ian? Since you obviously since you stopped playing for us, obviously a long time ago. Have you been much in recent years as a fan or anything? Yeah, I used to go to games whenever I can, and obviously people like John White have got a box down there as well, so I could always, you know what I mean? So whenever I go, I used to go in there. They've always been brilliant. I mean, there's one thing I, I, you probably are a little bit disappointed in, and, and ever, you always had someone you knew there, it'd be Julius Shelton, who's now going to sell you all, or Richard Beale or something, Colin Tatum. But if you look at it now, the Birmingham people have gone out of that football club. Yeah. That would alarm me. Mm-hmm. That yeah. would allow, you know what I mean? Because mm. they had a heart for the club, and now yeah. no one really knows what what you what, know what, what direction they want to take it, who's doing yeah. what, who's going. Um, but there was always that Birmingham, what I call the heartbeat in the club, yeah. Um, yeah. and that's no yeah. longer there. That would be mm. so. Yeah, it's a bit of a worry. Yeah. Mm. Nine. What can I say? Oh, this, this has been an absolute corker tonight. We never know what to expect on these shows, Ian. But you, you well, it's, it's just been absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at Jason Hughes, Maradona, <laughs> Gary, Coffee Company, <laughs> Maradona. <laughs> thank you very much, Ian Atkins. Thank you very much indeed for yeah, yeah. on a Monday night uh, through these difficult times. Because t- tell you what, it don't half cheer these people up out here. Uh, you see all these wonderful comments coming through all night long. Um, it's just well, it's a family, isn't it? Family. Well, what I do is as well. I've actually I've moved moved house. I've got all my stuff in storage, and when I get my stuff out of storage, I'm I'm certain I've got a lot of Birmingham memorabilia from oh, yeah, the era when I played. So I'll, I'll get into it tonight. You can have it in uh, yeah, again. Yeah, roughly yeah, off. Yeah, speak to Craig. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? So I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be moving in about three weeks. So. It's Carl Richards. Yeah. Carl Richards yeah. in a box. This <laughs> 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 can't fly the ground. Why do I never get a move? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Right, right then, guys. Was, great I, think, I think it was a pedal that did it as well. He, he, he thought he, was, he apparently passed his test with his right foot, but this was a left foot pedal. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could go on all night, but we have to cut at nine o'clock, unfortunately, due to uh, Chris having to edit it and one thing or another and get it ready for radio tomorrow night. Yeah, on yeah. Switch Radio, what, what time, Chris? Is it nine o'clock? Uh, I think it's on at ten o'clock tomorrow night. Ten. Is his mic gone again? Yeah. <laughs> ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Yeah. Ten o'clock's gone again, yeah. Ten o'clock. Gone. Oh, hello, ten hello, o'clock. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. OK. Thank you so much for being with us. This has been the Tell <clears> Talk <throat> Show. Hashtag is what Mondays are for. Thank you to Paul Hickis. Good night, all. Pleasure Thank as you always. Tomorrow. Mark yep. Ward, Mark, 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 Mark Ward, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Adams, ladies and gents, Mark Adams. Good night, good night, everyone. Have a, have a safe week. Good and from Mrs. Week. Brown. Good night. His microphone's gone again. Yeah, it's well. so, right, yeah. Let's take care, keep right on. And from Ian Atkins. Good night. Thank you so very much, sir. Take Pleasure. Care. Enjoyed good it. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for your time, Peace mate. Yeah. Pleasure. We are the lads from the Chilton. Wilson.